So off the effort of making the Context 7 MCP agent, I thought, well, let's try another different, but not any more complicated one to kind of refine the process and get some templates going. So I decided to try the Brave Search, which is another kind of reference tool on Smithery. So we have the main MCP trigger and it has a single tool which calls this workflow and the workflow has access to the web search and the local search. And look, the advantages apart from uh, you know something fun to do if you look at the answer so if this this is what Brave sent back for a query about models that Anthropic released in 2025 and instead of all of that ending up in the context for in this case Rucode the AI agent on N8N just sent back this summary and so it's a nice and condensed answer like it's a it's a dense answer to the question instead of having a lot of other stuff in the answer which means we're saving our potentially more expensive tokens although in this case I think I had um, deep seek on but you know if you're running Claude or, or Gemini well it costs money when you start adding more tokens into the context and so you know, it's potentially a cost saving and also doesn't pollute the context with all this other stuff you don't really want in there. And that, that's potentially the same with other um, similar kind of systems where you're doing this like agent to agent thing. And the other kind of aspect to this is like, you okay, so you could make a custom, uh, custom agent or custom mode in Rucode or whatever your AI ID is, but it's not portable. Right, so the, the structure of the commands, you know, in Rucode, you can't just pick that up and move it into like anything LLM or Open Web UI. And even if they do support agents, they're not set up in the same way. Whereas if I just have a single MCP server to call a bunch of tools via an agent, my instructions can be a lot simpler. And so if I want to add this as a tool onto another IDE or a chat, or something like that, I, I just have to teach it about this single MCP server. And it, and it only needs quite um, simple instructions. Uh, don't worry, I will change that URL. Um, uh, also, the bearer token kind of authentication, that does seem to work now. So in Rucode, you can define the, um, the login of, to the MCP server to use a bearer auth uh, access, which is pretty cool. Um, so you don't you're not reliant just on using the the random URL. So it's a potential token saver in your main AI code workflow, uh, but also yeah makes it kind of portable, which is really quite helpful I think. And so if we just have a look here, we'll just do okay. So you can see we've got root code here. Uh, that was a prompt I did before. So if I just say um, use the NN Brave Search to get a list of capital cities in Australia. Um, I was using this so much I ended up having to put a paid plan on Brave Search because I used up all the free tokens. Uh, it does look like you get some better outputs from the paid one as well. So it adds some more. Uh, information I think into the search results which is potentially useful yep so there's the list of cities so find out the current population of Sydney and Melbourne Just the MCP Okay, so it'll send a different query back. I've set the timeout to five minutes as well. I did find a couple of times the prompt would take just over a minute to answer, and so the default, um, it would struggle to get a, an answer back. All right, so you can see that's working. And like I, like I said, the, the beauty of it is we're not adding too much to the context. 
right? We've only added a small amount to the context compared to what's going on behind the scenes with the agent itself. So we'll just have a look at that. So if we go into the executions, <clears throat> uh, go to the most recent one. <clears throat> And that's the tool call. And this is the actual agent call. Okay, so if we have a look at this, right, so here is the answer that it got out, which is quite detailed. And, and the thing is though, that's like full of extra information which I guess we could go back and ask for like more details, but you know, this has got heaps of extra details which we didn't really ask for or didn't want. We just wanted the answer to our question. And so the agent has saved us from filling up our context or kind of polluting it with all that extra information, which I, I think is potentially quite useful. Um, and now you, another thing we could try here would be like adding a, um, a scraper component to this same agent so it could then go and look at those pages and um, get more information so I guess we could extend it in that in that way um, the other thing is I, I use this kind of process now of making a couple of these agent tools to create some templates which I can show you now so I made some some like blueprint files so if I, I grab one of the existing uh, workflows and I can use these files to output the bits that I need for like sticky notes and the prompts and things right so like when I did the brave local search I was able to come in here and then just copy and paste the the tool description and the tool parameters right so I could just copy that straight in to NA10 I didn't have to have a big conversation with um, Gemini about what these were I just was like no nope, here's the MCP we're connecting to you know work on these templates right? and that gives me that output which saves some time um, I have put those in github too so I can I can put a link with that uh, if that's useful um, yeah I, th I think there's something like it's interesting to me just to figure out how to do this kind of like agent to agent kind of communication I know it's over an MCP it's not using the agent to agent protocol yet. Um, I still find that a little technical to cope with, but in a n I can understand because I can look at it. So yeah, but I think the more complicated tooling, like if you have a lot of these different tools, you don't you don't want to add all of that context to your main orchestrator layer or orchestrator mode. So this way you can kind of shield it from there and just tell it, you know, if you want to get an answer about this kind of domain of knowledge, then use this tool. So yeah, hopefully that's kind of interesting for somebody. Um, yeah, thanks for listening.